How's it going everybody? It's me again. And like I said in the previous videos, I'm going to show off each separate section or genre or whatever of uh, my Dragon Ball collection. Uh, first thing that I'm going to show that I don't feel like moving is the Dragon Ball uh, 30th Anniversary Super History Book. Um, which is probably in my top 10 of my prized possessions. I really love this book. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, and I'm, I've been waiting for them to make updated guidebooks for Dragon Ball. But um, yeah, this is a masterpiece. I recommend anybody to get it. It's a lot cheaper now than it was when I bought it because I bought it when it first came out. Um, I wanted to pre-order it, but I didn't get the chance to. So I bought it the week it came out. But uh, yeah, this is awesome. You can find it anywhere if you're curious. Um, yeah, let's go to the next stuff. So here we have all of the manga, original Dragon Ball, all of Dragon Ball Z, and then uh, we have more Dragon Ball Z volumes. Those are the Viz Bigs, uh, and then the rest of the manga, and then some duplicates. And uh, also back there is Dr. Slump and Jocko the Galactic Patrolman. So now we're going to look at guidebooks and art books. Alright, so first one is uh, Dragon Ball Full Color, uh, Cyan Arc Volume 3. Dragon Ball uh, Movie Guide, Battle of Gods. Battle of Gods. Um, I got a really big weakness for some reason for these old video game guides. I guess because they give me some kind of nostalgia. And plus they're really cheap. So you're going to see a couple of these. Uh, you can see Goku 2. I really like these guides. It's just They have such a really nostalgic look of them. And if anybody is familiar with any of the, the old Dragon Ball Game Boy Advance games, you know, you get, those have tons of nostalgia. I always go back and play those. Look how old this book, book looks. It's just it's great. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. Super Dragon Ball Z. Alright. Uh, let's get the next one. Switch one, sorry. So, this is uh, a guidebook to uh, the plan to eradicate uh, science um, NES or Famicom game. Um, not the specials or the Playdia version, this is for the NES. And plus you could even tell by the graphics. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really cool. Um, plus I actually have the game so you know it would help. Probably would be good practice too. Plus these game guides, these old game guides at least come with like really cool posters. So this is the game guide for Super Plutoden 3. are pretty cool. I don't know, I really like game guides for some reason. I think it's just presentation and stuff. Alright, and this one is for Extreme Butoden. Um, called the uh, Limit uh, limit Break uh, Battle Guide for some reason. I think that's funny now because, you know, everybody's talking about Limit Break Goku and all that sort of stuff. And I really love the art in this for all the Z assists and stuff. Yeah. Plus it came with the code too, which is also another reason why to get Japanese versions of guides. Because I had the Japanese version of Extreme Butoden. Uh, and yeah, I was able to get the code for, for Gine because I had never had her. Yep. Now this one I would say is probably the most useful of all of my game guides. Uh, because if anybody knows about Dragon Ball Fusions and has played Dragon Ball Fusions, uh, it's not like the most obvious, you know, in terms of... How to get certain characters, you know, what world is this one character in. I know for me, I wanted to look for Super Saiyan 4 Goku, and then this book told me how to get it. Alright, Dragon Ball Landmark, which is, I mean, if you've had a Dai Zenshu, or if, even if you look at Khan Zenshu, they highlight the stuff in this book, which, uh, they use these books to highlight certain parts of the manga, or like stories and characters. Uh, you're going to see a lot of this sort of stuff among my collection. Also, they contain artwork from like original uh, other manga artists, which is pretty cool, and like notes and stuff. But obviously, that's from One Piece. Yeah. 
Dragon Ball Heroes uh, Hero Guide 14. I'm a really big fan of Dragon Ball Heroes. I love, love, love the cards. I love the game itself. I love all of it. Such a great series. Very important to Dragon Ball. Uh, Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. And I got this because it was really cheap and because, you know, I love Dragon Ball Raging Blast. I don't know, just books about some of my favorite games I, I enjoy having. And, you know, it's, it's not that bad if it tells me something about the game that I don't already know. And this one actually helped, uh, too, uh, for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Because uh, it'll tell you, like, special, uh, I guess, like, secret requirements for parallel quests and stuff. It tells you about some of the characters. And it came with um, codes. And it has, it has the manga uh, that came with the special version of the collector's edition version of uh, Xenoverse 2 which I already have so when I got this I was like oh cool you know it's free um, but yeah it's drawn by Toyo Taro which is pretty cool um, alright so next because there's a lot there's a lot we have to cover I got a lot when I was in Japan alright um so Dragon Ball 590 quiz book, which is exactly what you think it is. It's a quiz book on every little thing Dragon Ball. Right. So this is a one of those a anime comics. So this is an anime comic of the, and uh, basically the last few episodes of the series. Um, which I'm, I, I guess I'm in the minority here, but I actually like the the ending of Dragon Ball Z. I just like the vibe it gives off. You know. So this is probably one of the rarest books that I have. Um, this is the, the episode of Bardock uh, manga special uh, drawn by Naho Oishi. Um, and it's very small, of course. It's very thin compared to your average uh, Dragon Ball manga. But it's actually extremely rare to find. Um, luckily, I was able to find it at a good price. And I don't know, even though this story is not the most well written, I have to buy it because it's Dragon Ball. Um, and this is basically the the special book that apparently people who went to go see Resurrection F in Japan received, but these have been on sale online on eBay everywhere for you know a while now. So it's basically like giving like the script, a history of you know the rivalry and stuff like that. And yeah, this is basically the script. Um, all right, so this is one of the full colors. And I really like the Japanese versions of the full colors because they're smaller and thus they are cheaper. I mean, the bigger is cool too, but and also uh, it's also no, uh, worth noting that it has extra stuff besides it and in an interview. And it also, can this particular volume, which is the last volume, contains the the second ending to Dragon Ball Z um, that was uh, originally released in 2003 on the Kan Zenban versions of uh, the Dragon Ball manga. Alright, so I have all three vol uh, three volumes of the Japanese version of Dragon Ball Super. And of course I enjoy the manga of Super. Um, I'm not too sure if I like it more than the anime. I think I like both, maybe equally. Um, some stuff they do I don't appreciate, some stuff I do. Yeah, and um... And the most recent thing to come out after, right after the Dragon Ball Super manga was uh, Dragon Ball Heroes, um, what is that, Onkokumakai uh, mission. So like the Dark Demon Realm mission um, based off of Dragon Ball Heroes. And I'm, like I said, I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball Heroes. And this manga is, even though the art style it takes a minute to adjust to, because it's also done by somebody else other than Toriyama or uh, Toyotaro, um, I really enjoy it because I just really like you know Dragon Ball Heroes and the concepts and stuff like that and it's actually a good read if you speak Japanese it's a really good read it's pretty entertaining all right so let's get to the rest of the stuff gosh I have so much stuff now. so uh, Dragon Ball SD volume 1 and I really enjoy it. SD, I think it's hilarious. I think the art is great. I think the colors are great. I think the humor is fantastic. Um, 
It has some pretty cool extra stuff, usually towards the end of each comic, which I really enjoy. If you're just a fan of the characters of Dragon Ball, you'll enjoy this. Not necessarily the fighting. Um, Dragon Ball SD Volume 3. And I wonder what happened to this, uh, to this series. They haven't been making anything lately. I know it would always come out every other month, but it's been about a year since they've made anything, I believe. Um, Dragon Ball SD Volume 2. Dragon Ball SD Volume 4, which I believe in this one has something special at the end. One of these volumes uh, has like Battle of Gods at the end or something. Uh, I think it's an earlier volume. I don't know, I just really like, oh yeah, yeah. This was like showing off a preview of Battle of Gods. And you know, of course in SD, they do stuff differently. And I really, really like this picture of God Goku. I just really like the hair color and the eye colors. It's, it's just great. But yeah, this, I think this part of the chapter was covered around 2013 when the movie was coming out. Alright, um, so this is the anime comic version of Yo Son Goku and His Friends Return, which I have, I think I believe I bought it before I had the DVD version of this. Um, but yeah, still, nonetheless, a lot of these are cheap, so they're very cheap to get. So it's like you might as well get it, and it looks great on paper. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. That was back when Dragon Ball had like a drought. Um, now we go into like the fan made territory. In my opinion, uh, this guy, Young Gigi, um, which you can follow him on Instagram, he still makes artwork. He is the only one that's probably better than Toyotaro when it comes to emulating Toriyama's likeness. Um, this guy is incredible. And this is him during his prime. Uh, so this is Dragon Ball AF Volume um, Volume 12, which the title is Super, uh, Super Saiyan 5. No, and then I can't read the rest of that. But uh, yeah, this guy, if you really want, if you really love the art of Dragon Ball, especially the more angular stuff, you really need to check him out. He's incredible. As you can see, he's he's the closest to anything Toriyama or Toyotaro. Um, and then this is to uh, Toyotaro before he was Toyotaro, when he back when he was Toyable. Uh, Dragon Ball AF Volume One. And like I said, a lot of these are very these do uh, dojin dojonshi. Um, uh, or fan-made works are very expensive but these I was able to find at a decent price if you look hard enough and if you look long enough um, but these are a real treat especially if you're a fan of Toyotaro so it's like you get to see how he was before he started uh, officially writing material for the series but yeah this stuff is great the only problem I have with the fan-made stuff is they don't have furigana for those who don't know every kanji but um more stuff. This is the comic version of Os, uh, Go, uh, Son Goku and His Friends Return. Um, and this is the comic version written by O, O, uh, O, uh, sorry, um, Oishi Naho. Yep. Uh, but yeah, the artwork, like I said, her art style was pretty weird. And, uh, but uh, it's it's okay. It's very small, so you know it's fun. You can find this uh, on Japanese websites as well. All right, so this is a this is a um, Dragon Ball game guide, but it's for three video games. It's for uh, Hyper Dimension, uh, Final Belt, and uh, Dragon Ball Legends. So this compacts a lot of stuff within just this little book. But yeah, like I said, I really like these game guides, and sometimes I really like the artwork that comes with it. They make a lot of exclusive stuff, and some stuff like these pictures are ripped from the manga, obviously. But yeah. Alright, and then this is a volume of Psycho Jump that I got when I was in Japan. Um, and this covers Dragon Ball Heroes, Dragon Ball GT, as you can see, in anime comic form, and all these different, you know, all these different, uh fan-made mangas for series, especially Dragon Ball, and as you can see, that's the early stuff of Dragon Ball Heroes and uh, Dragon Ball Fusion's manga as well, and, you know, they come with Dragon Ball Heroes cards, which you know I'm a fan of, 
Um, and originally it did come with a free uh, demo volume of Dragon Ball Super, which I gave to a friend because I already had volume one. But yeah. Um, This is a V Jump volume. Um, personally, I bought this because it had these cards and it also had this picture of Zeno Goku on here. But of course, it does have, uh, you know, Toyotaro's manga in its format. And it has all this advertisement for upcoming stuff back when Dragon Ball Universe 2 was new. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, and this is uh, what they what uh, Konzenshu calls the digest version of of Dragon Ball, and this volume basically compacts a lot of volume 12 and 13, so basically the beginning of the Android stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's really beautiful and it's huge. It's very big. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically meant for people nowadays who are fam uh, not familiar with the series to be able to consume it and digest it in you know, a very fashionable and quick and cheap manner. Um, it's basically, yeah, and I also bought it because I really like that poster of WCF. Um, but yeah. Alright, so this is, uh, dra this is an illustration book, uh, anime illustration book of Dragon Ball, uh, the, the blonde, the blonde, uh, the golden warrior. And the artwork in here is, it's great. It covers a lot of the old artwork, um, some interviews, um, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, the Dragon Box uh, artwork, movie artwork, and some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so it basically covers the artwork from uh, the, basically the time when Toriyama wasn't making anything new. Basically, all this is basically promotion artwork for DVDs and stuff. And here we have another game guide: uh, Dragon Ball Z Super Sonic Warriors 2, Dragon Ball GT Transformation. And one of my personal favorites in the top five Dragon Ball games of all time, Dragon Ball Z Boost Fury. Absolutely one of my favorites. Um, here we have uh, the Toriyama Akira, The World. So basically covering a lot of Toriyama's early stuff, his other stuff, not just Dragon Ball. And I really like his artwork, so this is one reason I bought it. I really love his style, especially his, his older stuff. I don't know, he was much more detailed, and it, and it has like interviews and some intimate stuff about him, which I think is pretty cool. You know, we don't really get to hear too much about Toriyama. And these are extremely rare for some reason, um, and these are anime specials, so these contain like stuff with the voice actors, how, how the anime is produced, stuff about the characters and the show. Um, just a whole lot of stuff covering the material. This is before that they started making, you know, the guidebooks, the Gaizen sheet. Um, so I guess this is like the earliest form of a Dragon Ball guidebook next to the one that was made for the original Dragon Ball in 1986. Alright. And now we're going to cover the last, the last bit, um, the Dragon Ball Daizen shoes. Uh, animation part three. Anime guide part two, but this is of the Chosen Shu, uh, volume three, I believe. And this is the original version of that. Daizenshu 6, Anime uh, ka uh, Kadasu, uh, Perfect File Kardas Part 2, which is extremely rare to find, it's very expensive, um, and then it's Volume 1 Counterpart, which is also very expensive and very hard to find. Um, I guess people are really big fan of these cards, these are the vintage Dragon Ball cards, and probably the holy grail of of Dragon Ball fandom in terms of like guidebooks is Daizenshu 7 um, which is the biggest one of all the Daizenshus alright uh, Daizenshu 5 Daizenshu 4 with the, the wrap still on it some of these were in new quality when I bought them 
Uh, that is in shoot three. Uh, that is in shoot two. And then, finally, Dyson Shoot 1, or in the English version, the complete illustrations. So, uh, yeah, that's all of my books in relation to Dragon Ball. Um, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section, and yeah, see you next time.